Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. And today I've actually got absolutely no script, no nothing. I don't actually even know what I'm going to be talking about in this video. But I just wanted to have a nice, relaxed, sit down, chit chat with you guys um, as you watch me paint. So yeah, in the past couple of gouache landscape uh, speed paintings, I've only ever put music in the background because I never really knew what to talk about. But you guys have been asking uh, a lot about how I paint in gouache. And this is honestly a terrible video to actually talk about this, but I'm gonna do it either way. Um, and give you guys just some pointers and some tips. First of all, the basics. The one thing that I love about gouache is uh, that it can, it's just so versatile. It's, it's a, a genuine chameleon of paints is what I, like it's how I imagine it. Um, because it can act however you want it to act. It can be a watercolor if you want it to be, if you, it can be um, as thick as acrylic. It, it can honestly turn into anything you need it to be, which is what I love so much. And um, yeah, I've basically what I've done is I put all of my Winter and Newton gouache into a little like pillbox that um, Hannah, shout out uh, to my flatmate, gave me. Um, and it's basically my travel DIY travel uh, paint palette uh, with gouache in it and it's honestly a lifesaver and it's amazing for on-the-go painting uh, which I do a lot at coffee shops and stuff and yeah um, I, it has some extra little containers where I put my water in so I can dilute the gouache to the extent that I'm gonna need it for that specific task and here is where water comes into the play very importantly. So obviously, um, if I'm wanting to get a thicker, um, a thicker kind of medium out of the gouache, um, I will. Uh, before I start painting, I'll let some water just kind of sit in with the paint for a while because uh, gouache does dry up, and especially if you don't touch it for at least a couple of hours, it just starts to dry up. But it's very easily restorable, which is great. Um, so I let the water sit in with gouache for a while and let it um, dilute a little bit and become either as thick as I need it to be or as thin as I need it to be. Um, if I'm wanting to use it more as a watercolor looking medium, I will normally not even let water sit in with them. I'll just wet the brush and use the um, dried out gouache splotches as if they were watercolor um, tablets, uh, like you'd get in Windsor and Newton. Uh, so yeah, as you can tell, it's obviously so versatile, you could do whatever the hell you want with them. Uh, for this specific uh, day, I was kind of mixing in between the two, um, because for my uh, simplified gouache paintings, I like to use big thick layers of paint. But then for little details, it's very good to have some like watered down, diluted paint, obviously, to, you know, get more details in there, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of simplified um, paintings. But I was in a weird mood and kind of kept going back and forth between details and non-detailed. So we're not going there. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I did diluted some of the colors that I was gonna need thicker coats of and those were white and the base colors so like my pinks my blues and my greens but then again gouache is such a relaxing medium because you can just go along with it honestly like you can just if you need to change things up you can change things up easily and it's why I love painting with gouache so much because there's no stress no stress I don't really know what else to talk about. I, I first off, I lay down the basic uh, washes. First of all, I always paint what's furthest uh, at the back first, but that's just, you know, basic rules of painting um, that you probably already know. And then I just start filling in with like the bigger chunks first. So I lay down the basic colors, the, the washes, and then I go in with a second thicker coat. Um, and then I, what I normally do is I add the darks before I add the, the, the highlights, just because the highlights are the best part. Anyone will agree. It's just the most satisfying bit is adding the highlights. Um, 
and for my first uh, Tokyo uh, kind of a landscape that I did up in the top left, I used um, a fine liner to add in the darkest, darkest uh, shadows and especially like little details like the poles and little lines and stuff. Just because I thought it looked well with the aesthetic. But again, for the second landscape that I did, um, I didn't use fine liners at all because I just think it just looked better without it. So um, yeah, it was a very, it was a very experimental spread. This uh, yeah, I was just kind of experimenting with different uh, ways of using gouache. Um, and also another thing, do you say gouache or gouache? Like, let me know in the in the comments because I have this debate not only with myself but with others all the time. Let me know what you say, and if there is even a proper way to say it. I don't know. Uh, this um, this landscape that I'm painting right now is probably one of my favorites I've ever done, uh, just because I think the sunset bit just looks so nice. And I don't know if anyone spots this. But I forgot to paint in one of the uh, palm trees, um, just right there, stuck in the middle. Yeah, that was a good one. I only noticed it after I stopped recording, um, but yeah, I mean, whatever. And just let it stay like that. It's a naked palm tree. <laughs> this last landscape shows off really well what I do in terms of the building blocks of gouache, the way I do it. So I first lay down the washes and I kind of use um, the watercolor side of gouache for this. Uh, as you can see, it's all very kind of translucent and uh, watery and everything. And um, yeah, you can keep playing with it as watercolor, but I always like giving it a like thicker, um, you can see the brush strokes style. I really love that kind of stuff. So I go in with a thicker layer. Um, so for this I always let my gouache sit in with the water for this part a little bit um, whilst I let the watercolor bit dry which is you know just it's just a great time saving process I think I think I found um, in my obviously non-biased studies <laughs> but yeah this little like village hobbit looking town that I really love that I found on Pinterest was um, you know, it didn't really turn out as I was imagining it to, but I, I didn't hate it. I still liked how it looked. I wish I'd gone in with um, some more dirtier colors to make it look a little bit more rustic. But either way, I really like how it looked. It looks very magical and fantastical. So, yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it that I've got on gouache for you guys. It's it honestly become one of my favorite painting mediums. I've I only started actually working with gouache like back in October, and I am obsessed now. And the gouache that I use is the Winter and Newton gouache set. I've fallen in love with it. Still haven't found anything as good, but yeah, I actually got some back home from a Chinese store that were honestly still pretty good so you don't really ha have to have a high-end brand of gouache to work I think um, so yeah here you can see me struggling to give you that sweet sweet peel porn um, oh yeah this is my favorite part hands down <laughs> and there you have it guys just a couple more gouache simplified less simplified in uh, quotation marks of course <laughs> some some landscapes because you guys seem to love these and you always seem to ask for more. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the little tips and tricks on how I paint with gouache as well. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.